Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Erlingrat. Oh, probably just set hired help going. No, I'll drive down to the other end and do a pass across that end as well before I set the hired help going. It's just going to make life a little bit easier for us, I think. There'll be less confusion all around. Keep everything going nicely. I'm very curious if we're going to be able to take soil samples off of this contracted land. Right, that's something I'd really like. To, I'm, I'm folding this one up because you wouldn't actually be running down here uh, whacking the tops off the corn on your neighbor's field. He's, he's probably going to get a little bit upset with you if you do things like that. So if we just fold that one up out of the way, then we can unfold it over here and I can do a pass along here. And hopefully not get in the way of anything. So I want to bring you back like that. Let you unfold. There you go. Right. And then swing you in round like that. Okay. We can go and whiz up through here to that corner. And then I'm just going to set the hired help working down that side of the field. I will then go and accept a contract on field 13, drive down here and pick up the fertilizer that is lying in that tank on the side of the field and we can make a start on the edges of field 13. By the time we get through that, most of this field here will have been completed. And with that, the, I can't see us using up all of the fertilizer that we're carrying on this one. I, just, I, I don't think we're going to be using it in that kind of quantity. Uh, which means that we should have enough left over to complete field 30. At least this is what I'm hoping. Whether I've got that right, we, we may end up not quite having that much. Why aren't you actually running? Oops. Don't do that. I keep forgetting to turn this off. Right, it's because I keep getting new tractors every time. You shouldn't need to have to worry about switching the thing off, but... You, you kind of do. Right. That one's underway. Go and check on the ploughing. You've got maybe two more passes and then you're going to say job done. And so we are going to want to manually pick up a run up on each side of this field. Now, I'll do that at the end. I'm, I'm going to let it keep going until it's completely completed the job on this field. And then we will do the manual run. Um... Looking at the edge of the field there, and honestly, I'm sort of thinking it's probably not worth the bother of running up through there. But the other side of the field, that will be worth the bother. Right, well, we'll, we'll leave you there and you, you can keep doing what we're doing. Um, oh, wait, I'm back onto this one. Okay, I need to go in here. I need to go into contracts, and it's field 13. Let's double check that it is definitely field 13. Yes, it is. Directly opposite us here, the easiest way for us to get to it is going to be come out the shop, down the road, over to here, up to the roundabout, straight on at the roundabout, and then down that track. Actually, it's not going to make much difference, because I've got to get into field 9 before I can do anything else. So, yeah, that, that doesn't really make much difference. But, yeah, it is you, Sandra Steiner, I'm going to be working for you. We're going to borrow those items right there. Let's go and get that new tractor that I've just gone and... Um, picked up. This is the Valtra N134. There seems to be a lot of Valtra in this region. Um, I know it's more of a, a northern, uh, it's more of a Scandinavian beastie, but it's not surprising that there'd be quite a few here. I mean, it's, it's, Valtra is now fairly common across the whole of Europe. I don't know about the rest of the world, but I know that it is getting common around Europe. There's, uh, quite a few of them, like even here in Cornwall, there's, um, there's several that drive around. There's one contractor. He's got several in... Uh, um, he's got at least two, I've seen, in Burgundy. He may have more than that, but I, I, I'm sure he's got at least two of them in Burgundy. Whether he's got others in other colours, I don't know. Um, yeah, kind of a deep a deep red. It's, it's not, a, not a Massey Ferguson red, though. It's, it's more like those bricks over there, that kind of colour. Um, and... They they look quite good. Um, they, they they do look ever so nice. They they really do. And um, from what I've heard, I've never spoken to the people that drive the ones around here. But from what I've heard of other people, 
They're a very nice tractor to drive. They're a very well-made machine, a very nice tractor to drive, and it is apparently a, a treat to be able to sit in one of those. Um, some tractors, you just drive them. You just accept that that is how it is. Other tractors, you get in and you, you, you feel almost privileged to be allowed to drive them. And that's the impression a lot of people get with the Valtra, along with Fence. And John Deere always splits opinions. Because John Deere is so massively popular, I think some of the hatred that is directed towards John Deere is directed towards them purely because they are massively popular. There are legitimate reasons for disliking John Deere, same as there are legitimate reasons for disliking so many other things. But I do wonder sometimes some people are just jumping onto the hate wagon for the sake of trying to be cool. Um, personally, I love driving a John Deere. Um, compared to driving a New Holland, I find driving a John Deere to be like driving a Rolls Royce. It is absolute beauty of a machine to operate. I love driving John Deere tractors. I've driven quite a few in my time and compared to just about any other tractor I've driven, it is the top of the range. It's the creme de la creme of tractors that I have driven. I've never actually driven a Fent though. And a lot of people have pointed out that if I was to drive a Fent, I would be unlikely to be thinking that John Deere were the best of the best because uh, the Fent would take that um, title. And that's fair enough. You know, I, I can well believe that. Almost everybody I've ever spoken to that has driven a Fent um, says pretty much the same thing. You know, if, if you want a... If you want a decent job... Decent job. If you want a decent machine... If you want a machine that is really, really going to make you think that, you know, you've had a, a, a genuine treat to be allowed to drive it, then you need to sit in a Fent tractor and drive one of them. Um, I've, I've had a lot of people tell me that. Um, so I've, I'm still waiting for the day when I get to sit in a brand new Fent and, and drive one of those around, but apparently it is an absolutely wonderful thing to drive. It, it is a, a, a real genuine treat. Um, New Holland, I have driven a lot of New Hollands, and yes, I know there's a lot of people out there who really, really love New Holland. Personally, I was quite, unim I've always been unimpressed with New Holland. I've always been very unimpressed with New Holland. I've always found them to be um, mediocre at best. I mean, they do the job, and they're a nice cheap tractor, but I don't actually like the tractor very much. I've never particularly liked the cab. I've never found, certainly, I have never sat in the cab of any New Holland tractor and found myself thinking that I'm sitting in luxury, that I'm sitting in a cab that was designed to um, create the maximum amount of comfort possible for the driver who is going to be spending probably 14 to 16 hours a day sat in that vehicle. I never get that impression with the New Holland. The impression I get when I sit in New Holland is they've done this as cheaply as they possibly can whilst trying to give you some comfort. That's the impression I've always had with New Holland. Never been particularly taken with them. Um, but, I mean, may maybe these days it has been 10 years since I've driven a, a brand new one. So, I mean, maybe brand new New Holland these days have sort of up their game a little bit. I'm willing to accept that. that there may be some vast improvements. I mean, it would have to be fairly substantial improvements to sort of um, really improve on what I'd, uh, I've seen on New Holland in the past. Uh, just getting a drink. Um, Field 9 contract is finished, so that one's going to be done soon drop you down here. Actually, what I'm going to do is, before I go and do that plow line over there, you are doing a great job. You over here, though, you're having to turn round to go and do a little thin strip that's left, so I'm going to bring that over here so it's not overlapping the next field, and then you can go up through there. And that'll go and do the little thin strip that's left, and then we're going to take the fertilizer that's left on here, and run it across the road for that one over there because they have got uh, 136 litres left. So I'm actually going to stop this one at this point over here. 
So I don't think it's going to get across the field again. I'm going to stop that one right there. I'm going to fold it up. And we're going to drive back round. Down to the entrance way down there. So that we can go and get uh, the rest of the fertilizer that's in that other sprayer. And then we can carry on with our job down here. And we can, we can just start on this end of the field over here. And that will allow us to work our way through. I'm actually just going to bring you to here, and then the other one can drive down to us. We'll, we'll come down here and meet it. So you're going to get to right there, and that's done. Right. So then I can go whizzing back up through this way. We'll lift you up out the way, and then I can drive out onto the track properly. I can go and give this fertilizer to my worker that's working over there, so that he's got enough to complete that contract over there. And then I can complete this contract on this field. And we've got more fertilizer done. There's a couple of other fertilizer jobs that we still need to do. There's a few solid fertilizer jobs that we'll want to juggle. But at the moment, the main ones that we're working on are the liquid spraying. So let's unload that one. i got to separate the two out a bit. Oh, I know what I need to do. I need to actually select the sprayer. There we go. Right. That one's done there. So you can just park there like that. And we literally just cross the road from the the one there. So the farmer can come and get it. Quite happy for him to do that. Uh, that one. I haven't finished the plowing. I've got a little bit of tidy up work to do on that one. So we can collect that one. Field 9 fertilizer. And then I can go here. And we can load up the fertilizer here. Let's load it into the back one. Like that. Is it going to actually load it all the way up? Yes, it is. Right, we've loaded that one up. I've loaded up the bit into the front tank. And I've loaded up the bit there into that front tank as well. So I've got 1,800 litres left. Which I don't know that we're going to have enough to be able to do the other fertilizer. I've got two more fertilizer jobs, I think, that need liquid spray. And I don't think this is going to be quite enough to be able to do both of those jobs. I think we're going to need one more tank. So what I might end up doing... Set you going there. Let's just double check what we've got in here. Right. Uh, fertilizer. Solid. Solid. Liquid there up in field 6. That's only going to be a really small one. So we've got enough to cover that one. And we've got field 20. That's the only other one. Field 20 is that square there. So I think we'll get field 6 next. And I'll bring that tractor down. So that it's over here ready. And then we can offload the fertilizer on here once this job is finished into the tractor to go on up to field 6. And then we've got to come back to field 20 down here. So we want the field 6 contract for fertilizer spraying right there. Borrow items like that. And then we go back to the yard. We pick this one up. So this time we've got a front weight right there. We're using a New Holland unfortunately i know that there are plenty of people that love new hollands and they um they genuinely do love driving these machines but for me i've just never really i've, I've never really seen it um and even back when i was driving them um you know 10 years plus ago it was no different to what it is now that that like um well it was that's, that's, I'm, I'm going on the situation then. I mean, maybe they are a little bit more luxurious now. But uh, it, it, for me, it was always the John Deere was the luxury cab. You know, if, if you wanted a comfortable cab, you went and sat in a John Deere. You would not get that level of comfort in a New Holland. Um, but at the same time, I knew plenty of people that liked the New Holland. Much preferred the New Holland. And one of the people that I used to work with that would always opt for the New Holland tractor over the John. I would get the John Deere whenever possible because, you know, if, especially if two of us were working together because he preferred the New Holland. So that, that worked out just fine for both of us. Um, but one of the things that he used to liken it to was, well, the New Holland has got plenty of space for your legs. Your, your seat goes right back. 
whereas the John Deere has got much less space behind the seat. Uh, sorry, the, the John Deere has got more space behind the seat. I think it was that way around. You know I could be completely barking at the wrong tree here, and I could have gotten that the wrong way around. Um, but, I mean, you look you look in that cab in there. Oops. <laughs> uh, you don't. There's not a lot of space behind the seat there in that New Holland, is there? Right, you haven't got anywhere to put your crib bag. And, I mean, the, the John Deere comes with all sorts of little compartments you can go and put your food in. You've got refrigerator compartments and stuff like that. Um, New Holland, you can sort of stretch your legs out a bit. So if you like to have your seat right back and you like to have your, your legs stretched out, you can do that in New Holland more than you can do it in a John Deere. Um, at least I think it was that way around. I, I, it's... It's been more than a decade, ladies and gentlemen. So if I've got that the wrong way round and it's actually the, you know, you haven't got so much space behind the seat in the John Deere, uh, I do apologise. I cannot, I, I'm pretty sure it was that way round. Um, for me, neither one of those things really mattered. But for the person that I worked with, it did. It was a, it was a, a very serious issue for him. He liked to have somewhere to put his lunch bag and... Um, so that, that was kind of like a consideration. But also he liked to be able to stretch his legs out as well. So I I, I don't remember. I'm pretty certain it was that way round. Um, me, I just remember I loved the John Deere. I found the John Deere to be infinitely more comfortable than um, driving the New Holland. I, I, I just wasn't a fan of the machine. I, 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 never, I ne never at any point was I a big fan of the... Um, of the John, uh, John Deere, of, of the New Holland. Like it, it was for me, it's always been the John Deere. I've always loved driving them. Um, from the really old machines, like I used to drive, I'd learned to drive pretty much. Well, I, there's a combination of a, a Massey 35 and a John Deere 2650. You know the old ones with the round cab on the front. Um, that was one of the tractors that I learned to drive in. Was one of those 26 round cab 2650s. And I loved that tractor. It was it was like the lap of luxury compared to any other tractor, and it was it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, I, I know the same tractor now. It's, it, it spends most of its life parked in the back of the shed, not doing very much, and feeling looking fairly sorry for itself. It must be said, um, the person that owns it doesn't tend to use it very much anymore because um, they've got bigger and better, and they've actually insult of insults. They've gone and replaced that absolutely wonderful John Deere with a much bigger tractor. That's, that's fair enough. These days, everything's much bigger than the, the old, um, eight, I think it was about 80 horsepower, that one was. Um, they've, they've gone and replaced it with a much larger tractor. It's about 180 horsepower, maybe 200 horsepower. It's a New Holland. If They've gone and replaced that wonderful 2650, the John Deere, with a New Holland. Now, I know there are plenty of you that love to hate on the green tractors and tell me that they're absolutely awful and that you'd rather, you know, do the job by hand than have to use a John Deere tractor. Um, some of you, I know for a fact, have never actually driven a tractor in real life, so I really struggle to understand where this hatred of it comes from. Um, others, yeah, fair enough. If you don't like them, you don't like them. But, um... Yeah, I, so I, I realise I may get a bit of pushback on this, but me, personally, I, I do love a John Deere. Um, it's, it's the New Hollands that I'm not so keen on. The uh, other tractors, like Case, uh, there's a few people that really, really love Case around here. Um, that watch the channel and that. And personally, I've only ever driven Case a couple of times. And I was neither amazed nor disgusted by those tractors. I found it to be just kind of mediocre. That was honestly the best report I could give on the case tractor. It was just mediocre. It was reasonably comfortable. It performed reasonably well. There was nothing outstanding about it, but there was nothing about it that made me think I don't want to sit in this thing anymore. So it really was just mediocre. That There was mediocrity right the way through with my experience with the case tractor. Uh, but I have not driven it very much. I only spent a few months working for a chap who had one. Um, other than that, I've not really had anything to do with them. Uh, right, anyway, we have now completed this contract. At long last, our ploughing, it always seems weird to me seeing it spelt O-W, whereas English spelling is O-U-G-H. This is American spelling, the O-W, I think possibly Canadian as well. Um, 
But for me, this is definitely spelt wrong. This would get you, you know, a little a red cross next to it in school, and they would correct it with O-U-G-H, ploughing. Uh, but anyway, that, that's, that's neither here nor there. So we got 4,000 now. We've probably spent 1,100 in wages doing that ploughing job. But collect right there. That field is now ploughed, which means that new contracts will, you know, if we put some fertilizer on that field and we keep it weed free, the next time we are asked to harvest that field, we should get a reasonable yield coming off of it. Now, I've got another job that is completed, which is this one. We are now finished on that one, so I can go and fold that up. I've got 1,200 litres of fertiliser left. By the time we've completed field six up there, we're going to have much less of it. We're not going to have, I don't think, enough fertiliser to complete the final fertiliser task that I've actually got. So I'm just going to unload that bit, and then I'm going to switch to the back tank and unload that bit as well. I'm going to move this one out of the way, just over there, keeping it on the edge of the field, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to load that bit up, and then we will complete this job in here before we go scurrying off up the field six. So let's load up that little bit there, 500 litres, and then we can grab that, and we can load up that little bit in there, and that takes us up to 1,200 litres. We don't need any more than that. Definitely not for field six. And then if we go into here and uh, contracts. Right. Field, uh, field six is active. I don't want to complete that one yet. Collect right there. 3,000 on that one. So I've just got field six. That's the only active one I've got. Field three has now got a... Seriously? You want me to do field three with that tiny little machine right there? going to be there forever. Like, honestly, like, that's going to take hours to do. So we'll have to keep going backwards and forwards to get seed. I, okay, that's really weird. Why are, you, uh, why are we only allowed to use that tiny little one there? That's awful. It's never going to work. Let's get this one up to field six first. I'll be getting a lot of feedback about the DLC. I know I'm getting like a, a couple of weeks ahead with recordings, but I have seen some of the feedback is coming in. And yes, all of the yield issues is all down to the Precision Farming DLC. However, it does seem that the plan that I've got in place for uh, going along and doing all the fertilizer jobs and stuff like that is actually the correct approach. If we keep going with this, we do the weeding, we do the fertilizing, and so on and so forth, even without testing the soil, we should, on our next round of harvest, it should correct all of the problems that we've been having. And somebody did actually say that it's only the first time that you get um, crops going in, because after that, it the game should auto-correct it anyway to go back to... Uh, normal yields. It's only the first time that it actually gives you any issues. Now, I don't know if that is actually the case or not, um, and we will find out about that one. But another one is there. Look, this application thing. I didn't realize this was a thing. You've got deactivate automatic application rate right there. Um... So you look down through this, turn on sprayer, high worker, full sprayer, deactivate automatic application rate, unload, lower, change crews, yada, 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 nitrogen, liquid fertilizer application, no values detected yet. Now, the thing is, we can't, we're not doing any testing at the moment. We, we uh, According to the rules of the series, we're not allowed to do any testing yet because I can't lease anything and I don't have any owned land yet in order to go and put the stuff on. Now, if I deactivate at the moment, if it, we'll go and start, we'll, we'll leave that one up there and I'll start that one up like that and we go and put this through. Now, it's not telling us what our rates are on the minimap down in the bottom left hand corner because we haven't tested any of the soil so we've done no testing which means that we got no way of knowing what exactly we're applying here but apparently the activation that deactivate the automatic rate 
because we're using the automatic rate, oop, I don't want the AI extension, I keep forgetting to turn that off, uh, because we don't have the um, anything on there and we've got the automatic rate selected, it will apply fertilizer at the maximum possible rate that it can apply fertilizer. Um, and if you switch it off, it will then reduce the amount. But I haven't really noticed anything extra being applied by leaving it on. So for now, even though it does have that, I'm going to leave it in place because who are we to say that the farmers don't want their fertilizer applied at maximum rate? So we'll just let them do that. Now, a few people did say that perhaps the total of about 25000 thousand euros in penalties that we've paid from the two harvest jobs that went wrong is maybe a little bit steep and yes i agree it is maybe a little bit steep but i kind of figure that that is going to cover us for anything that goes wrong any potential fines that we might have to pay bills and a few other bits and pieces as well um you know and also the occasional bit of sharing machinery if something goes wrong as well. Although for actually sharing machinery for when things go wrong and not because I've gone and done something wrong. Um, then, you know, that's, that's kind of a game glitch rather than anything else. But the 25,000, I'm not going to do any more. If we do end up having some more failures, I will add that money back in and correct it because it's a, a mistake with DLC. It's not down to misplanning on our part. But I feel that that 25,000, I know it's a bit of a hit now at the start, but it is something that we can kind of live with, we can work through, and it won't be the end of the world. So I'm happy to kind of roll with that one, and we'll see what happens with it. Now... What I am going to do here is I'm just going to let that one finish to the end of the row right there. And you know, it never finishes to the end of the row, does it? It always leaves a little tiny bit there. So I've just gone and corrected that. And then if I start it a minute, like that, and then press H and just let it go. We've got 33,000 euros. We've got this little tiny one here, and then the last job that we looked at was the seeding job for field three i want to finish this one complete this one and i'll send it back it's only 800 liters of fertilizer left so it's not going to be a great deal we'll get the money refunded on that yes you do take a slight penalty on the refunding costs but i think that's fine so that's what we've got we've got application rate of 341 liters per hectare 39 percent nitrogen on the auto thingy up there and, and that's what it's busy doing. And then when we get a little bit more advanced later on, see, it's left a little tiny square right there. Um, why aren't you... Why isn't the fertilizer thing turning on? I have no idea. It's not turning on. But anyway, you know, we, we, we've gone and done the field. I don't really mind too much about that. Let's let that one fold up a second. And then as soon as it... Well, unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. So while I sit up here and enjoy this view and a well-earned break, could you please consider taking a look at the links in the description down below? We have Nitrado, who provide gaming servers, who are very, very reliable, and they provide us with a server on our Discord channel. And there is also Fanatical, where you can buy all kinds of different computer games for various different platforms. So if you've enjoyed this video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.